Hi, in this video I'll take you through how to set up SQL Server Always On Availability Groups. This is a new high availability and disaster recovery feature in SQL Server 2012. It sits on top of Windows clustering, so you need to have the Windows cluster configured first before you can configure Always On Availability Groups. All the servers that you want to use in your availability group needs to be added as nodes in the Windows cluster. My last video gave a step-by-step -step demo on how to configure a Windows cluster for Always On, so you could refer to that if you need guidance on how to set that up. I'll open up the Failover Cluster Manager so you can see how this Windows cluster is currently set up. Under Nodes, you'll see that this is currently a three-node cluster. Notice that this isn't a SQL Server failover cluster, it's just a Windows cluster. So there's nothing under shared storage and there are currently no services or applications. You can configure always on with SQL cluster, but you can also use always on with standalone SQL servers. The Windows cluster, however, is required. So let's begin. And the first thing we need to do is enable the always on feature. To do this, go to the SQL Server Configuration Manager, which is under Programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2012, Configuration Tools, and then SQL Server Configuration Manager. Under the Services, right-click on your SQL Server service, and you'll see a Always On High Availability tab go to that and select the checkbox to enable always on availability groups. You'll need to restart the SQL instance for the changes to take effect. And this needs to be done on all the nodes. I already went ahead and did it to my other two secondary servers. So we can move on. The other two servers I'm going to use is this one test2 and this one du sql 2012 test on my primary server i have a few databases here i'm going to include three of them in my availability group the eventualworks test db1 and test db2 to create an availability group go down to the always on high availability and right click on availability groups go to new availability group wizard Enter a name for your availability group. I'm going to call this test group one. Under select databases, select the databases you want to include in the group. I'll select these three. All the databases in a group will fill over together. So if test DB1 fails, EventureWorks and test DB2 will fill over as well. Here you'll also see test DB3 and test DB4, but they don't meet the prerequisite requirements, so their checkboxes are grayed out. The prerequisite is that the database must be in full recovery mode, and at least one full backup has to be created. For test DB3, it's still in simple recovery mode, and the message says full recovery mode is required. For test DB4, it is in full recovery, but a full backup hasn't been created and the message says full backup is required. Click on add replica to add the secondary servers. I'm going to add two secondary servers. And I'll set these two to automatic failover. You could only set up to two for automatic failover. And you could only set up to three for synchronous commit. I'm just going to leave this as asynchronous so you can see what the behavior is like for that. We can set the secondary databases to read only. And there's two options. There's read only yes, and there's also a read intent only. The difference is with yes, all connections to the server are allowed, and the connection can only read the data. With read intent only, only read only connections are allowed. 
So you can't even connect to the server unless you specify that your intent is to only read the data. And you can specify the intent in the application's connection string using the application intent property. So I'll set the first two to yes, and the third one to read intent only. Under endpoints, endpoints are needed the same way that database mirroring needs endpoints. If the server doesn't have an endpoint, it will create one for you. Under backup preferences, specify where you want the backups to occur. You can prefer to do it on the secondary, on the secondary only, on the primary, or on any server. And you can also adjust the priority level here. I'll leave it as prefer secondary and I'll increase the priority of one of my secondary servers to 60. That's where I'd like most of my backups to occur. Under listener, you can choose to create the listener now or you can do it later. There's a couple things you need before you can create the listener though. You need to first reserve a DNS name and an IP address for the listener. If the nodes of your Windows cluster are on different subnets, then you need an IP address for each of those subnets. You'll probably need to work with your network admin to help you reserve those resources. Another prerequisite before you can create a listener is the cluster computer account must have the create computer objects permissions on the domain. I'm going to create my listener now and the name I have reserved is AO test 01. I'm going to use port 1433. And I have two subnets, so I need an IP address for each of those subnets. Here we specify how we want to synchronize the databases. I'll choose the first option to create the full and log backup. This share folder needs to be a folder that all the nodes have access to. It'll do a validation check to make sure there's no errors. Click next for the summary and then finish to create the availability group. The availability group is created and no errors or warnings. Now let's go over to the secondary replicas and we'll see those databases there now. Under the availability group, if we refresh, we have our test group one availability group. And under replicas, we have our three nodes that are part of this group with these three databases along with our listener. Let's take a look in the failover cluster manager. Under services and applications, it's now managing this application our availability group test group one. Let's go ahead and test the failover really quick to make sure it works. So under the availability group, right click on the group and go to failover. We'll need to select the secondary server that we want to fail over to. Notice that for our second secondary server, it's in asynchronous mode so there's the potential of some data loss. 
I'm going to choose to fail over to the first one. We'll need to connect to it first. And it's done failing over. Notice that the availability group now says secondary on the server. If we go to our what was the secondary server, the availability group there now says primary. So that is how you set up and configure SQL Server always on availability groups.